It's time for our Southern Mallee Giants footy report. And joining us is Coleman Shack. He's on the urea spreader. He's out there and working his backside off in the lockdown. Get as much done as you possibly can. Hey, Coleman, how are you? Yes, uh, just in answering another lockdown, Wayne. But other than that, going all right up here in the Mallee. I thought you might be... Um, the girls are going all right. Uh, I think it has to be pointed out that this is the Southern Mallee Giants footy report, but coming up, Michaela George uh, does bring us the netty report. They're top of the table. They beat Horsham on the weekend, uh, 33 to 31. And Michaela, our uh, best wishes to her from everyone here at the Sports Show because she had a knee operated on, which, of course, she did uh, right at the start of the season. Yeah, she was, she did in the practice match, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, it's all talk around the girls at the moment. So happy to talk about them as long as you want. They're, they're showing us up and leading the way at the moment. And it was a good game by all reports. Obviously, you couldn't watch it um, as we play at the same time as them. But um, there was two points in it, I think. And, um, yeah, it was a bit of backwards and forwards with the scoreboard. And, and uh, Demons, I think they're second on the ladder. So, yeah, it was a good win. Good win by the girls at the uh, Demons home court. Yeah, no crowds there so everyone that couldn't uh, get to it it was a uh, great spectacle we're told. Well done to the girls. Hey, the, uh, talking footy though, well done to the blokes uh, because uh, a side that's been a really tough one for you to get over in uh, previous years has been the Horsham D's and on their um, the very, very wet and sodden track you got home and beat them in an absolute beauty of a match. Uh, and it was a one that you put you in second place on the ladder. 6-10-46 to 4-10-34. Coleman, it was like a um, like an under-14 scoreline. Yes, it was uh, definitely not a spectacle, that's for sure. So probably doing a few favours with the supporters not being able to watch. But um, they, it was actually streamed online, so some good feedback there. People sitting at home, um, they were able to watch the game still, uh, which which was good. But yeah, the first quarter we, we got away a little bit and kicked a couple, um, got a three goal lead, and then yeah, after that it was uh, just uh, continuous rain the whole game. So the footy was a bar of soap and it was hard to handle at times. But um, coming out of the last lockdown, we didn't really front up against the Saints and uh, they got the job done. So it was pleasing that we could um, get over the line over Horsham coming out of um, a lockdown and, and we were a bit more switched on, ready to go this, this time around. So we definitely learned our lesson and um, kept us in that top three. Yeah, my um, uh, scribes and those that watch it tell me that uh, the bar of soap was handled very well by Coleman Shack, but that was after the game for the shower. <laughs> oh, no. Jeez, you've got some real inside sources there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you played very well, I'm told. Best on ground from you, Coleman. Um, I know you can't talk about yourself and that, but uh, I can say that uh, you did actually, the word I have is that, that you were able to handle the bar of soap very, very comfortably. Well done. White, thanks to Drew, Burdett and Mahone, Amani were also handling it well. And um, it was um, the Coleman check with two goals. You don't normally get yourself onto the score sheet, Coleman, so a bit of ball hogging there? No, I don't. So I'll definitely uh, take them when they come. But yeah, it was uh, like I said, wet weather footy and just some yeah, scrappy kicks seem to just roll through. So got a bit lucky to get on the end of a couple there. Uh, well said. Um, now let's have a look at uh, what happened on the day elsewhere. Of course, uh, in the reserve grade, your fellas have been fighting really, really hard this year and it hasn't been easy with the number of players having to go up regularly. Horsham got the job done, 6-9-45 to 2-10-22. Um, I know that you're probably inside getting uh, ready for the next game, but anything you can give us feedback on this comment as to uh, why the lads got done here and probably their inaccurate kicking, uh, it was tough going. Yeah, the inaccurate kicking obviously didn't help help the boys. There was a couple of uh, definitely a couple of gettable shots there for them. Um, but no, look, it was pretty slippery in their game as well. Um, not not making uh, too many excuses. They definitely would have liked to um, turned up and played a bit a bit better. But um, they're starting to yeah, they're still in saying that starting to play some better footy in, in the back half of the year now. So hopefully they've still got their um, finals chances alive and um, if we can yeah obviously not playing this weekend but if they can win a couple um, going into finals they can still get that top three spot which is all important with a double chance so um, there's plenty of your numbers on the training track and they're definitely keen so I reckon yeah it won't be too far away before they start clicking and jelling a bit 
bit more better and a bit more consistent. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, Big Saunders kicked a go and Holland also got one. They were hard to get. Colbert Richardson, Connor McCredden, uh, very good player and could get back into the seniors. Holm, very good. Uh, he's actually had a good season. Williams and Anders also going along real well too in the reserve grade. So that was uh, pretty good uh, in tough conditions, as we said before. Uh, earlier on in the day, well, it's uh, certainly tough to start the day and uh, where no crowds apart from one parent uh, coming along, uh, it was a really very, very hard time for the boys. They got done 10 4 64 to nothing. I think the mercy rule got enacted in the, might have been the very early part of the third quarter. Would that be right, Coleman? Yeah, it was just after half time. Um, but yeah, to, to um, Demon's credit, uh, they, yeah, they gave us, um, pro- I think, four of their sort of top, um, top players um, after that. So uh, I know Lewin was very, yeah, happy with what the team did to, to really make a game of it in the end so the boys get a good um, even hit out. And, um, yeah, it's good to see Kai Ballinger hit the scoreboard um, yeah, and kick a goal. So that was that. That was also pleasing. Yeah, very good. Hakopa, Williams, K. Hallam, J. Chris, K. Smith and C. Frankel all got amongst it uh, for the Giants and tried really hard. OK, the scenarios. You don't get to play Dimbula now in the whole year, which, well, unless they re-change the draw, that's going to be hard because of the nine-team competition and the buy rounds. It's virtually impossible to do that. So I'd suspect that you may not get to play Dimby, but then again, you might in the finals. Yeah, that's right. It might be just, yeah, come up against them for the first time of the year in finals. So who knows? They might, um, yeah, rejig the last couple of rounds so we do get that round in that we've missed um, in both ends of the season at the start and at the end just so everyone plays everyone once at least. But, um, yeah, you, your guess would be as good as mine. I personally don't like to waste too much energy trying to work out what they're going to do. I know yeah, what it'll be is what it'll be, and I think they've got a meeting coming up uh, early next week just with plans going forward. So we'll just, yeah, sit back and just uh, keep training, and keep kicking the footies while we while we can in our own time by ourselves and, and make sure we're ready to go for when we get the old clear again. Yeah, I tell you what, Kelman, you'll be um, out there in the paddocks, uh, I know, running, uh, doing all the training that you do do uh, off uh, when there isn't uh, the opportunity to get out with the lads uh, on Thursday night. Uh, Thursday night, did you get the casseroles uh, eaten and so forth? Did they um, end up getting those moved on? Yes, we did. Um, yeah, Jezza Hose and Bruce Landry can do a terrific job cooking up a meal for us all. So we uh, got off the train track a bit earlier than normal and obviously knew we had to be home by eight. So, yeah, got our feeds in early and yeah, had our last little catch-up before we yeah, were locked away for seven days. Yeah, certainly. Now, the goods and services auction no longer is going to be on a like a night. The hoped and game was going to be that and when the Saints were coming to visit next week. Given the uncertainty now about even whether the round will occur or whether it would be with no crowds, they've decided to make the auction an online auction. And, Coleman, they tell me that you're going to be chopping wood all summer. Yes, the senior players of... Uh... Yeah, put in um, as much as much wood as uh, as the price goes for. So if someone buys our our uh, senior players item for five grand, we'll go out and chop chop five grand of wood for them. That's what we're uh, putting forward. So hopefully, uh, yeah, the bid's nice and high, and yeah, it raises a bit of money for the footy club. So I've got idea by the players. <laughs> Have you got any Mally scrub left up there that you can chop for that amount? <laughs> no, I reckon there's a few there dead. Trees lying around on the uh, on the president's farm. He might give us a few out there. <laughs> Good stuff. I uh, reckon the uh, the fellow who handles the bar of soap the best will be out there chopping too. Uh, he's going to have to get his urea finished and then get on to the next phase of it, which will be the spraying. Have you noticed any weeds common? Yeah, definitely in my paddocks. But a couple of neighbours next door, it's about a cook. You won't find any me- many weeds in his paddocks. <laughs> no, stop looking over the fence at the neighbours, mate. Uh, we'll catch up with you next week. No worries, fine man. Thanks for that.